Well, I just spent several hours updating the firmware on this uh, SDGE2122X and that was because of an issue uh, a little over a month ago. I turned this generator on, I hadn't used it for a while, and it uh, wouldn't boot. Uh, so this video is actually to warn anyone who has this instrument or any other signaling instrument that uh, you may want to be more careful, as I was not, at updating very rigorously uh, your firmware. And I'll explain why in just a minute. But uh, I contacted Sigland and eventually, uh, thanks to Jason and uh, Scott uh, Rocco, uh, Jason Chonko and Scott Rocco, I was able to get the unit repaired but it cost almost $200 by the time I paid for shipping and packing and insurance and all of that up there. But they did repair the unit, they did return it, it did work, and then uh, I have since been upgrading the firmware for most of the morning. But let me give you just a little bit of the backstory on this and why you might want to be careful if you own any signaling instruments. Several years ago, uh, Dave Jones from EEV Blog, who had exactly the same uh, model of signaling instrument, had exactly the same problem. One day he turned it on and it wouldn't boot. So he contacted Siglant and they sent him this firmware upgrading from SD card document along with the necessary uh, files. He downloaded it. Uh, he was able to, you put this onto an SD card and you have to put a jumper inside to reboot the, the system and it reboots uh, and it recovers and it worked fine for Dave. I saw these videos and I was frankly expecting that this would be available. Because I bought this generator originally to evaluate for a university curriculum, lab curriculum, uh, I didn't really use it that much over the last several years and by the time it mine failed the warranty had expired. Now, I probably haven't put an hour's worth of use on it in the last two or three years, so uh, it would be, uh, it, it probably will fail uh, more quickly if you use your instruments more often, but uh, in this particular case, this wasn't an instrument I used very much, though I did like it. Uh, also, by the way, I do want to uh, say I, I appreciate uh, people like Jason and Scott who eventually got this thing fixed and I think that what's going on here is uh, a problem where the people who do the work are not the people who set the policy and so uh, let me give you a quick overview of that and then close all this out. So this was the first uh, record I got for uh, email I got from Scott Rocco. I had uh, worked with Jason on a couple of things in the past, including some of those reports for the university that they've shared with others and so on. But I had never worked with Scott before, so he introduces himself uh, and then says that I am sorry you're experiencing and so on. Our policy for repairs, try and recover the unit with the USB recovery, which we had tried. Actually, Jason had sent me that. It didn't work. I retried. I tried a different USB stick. I did all the things that Jason suggested. It wouldn't fix it. Uh, then he says we can provide an RMA to have the unit brought in our office for repair. It's not our policy to send out SD card code for customers to try and uh, repair instruments. So I spent a little bit of time trying to convince them that uh, with more than 50 years experience I've been, I've been working on stuff since tube radios. I have a PhD in electrical engineering. I, I do curriculum, uh, uh, lab uh, improvement uh, work with uh, the university and, and other places. And I used to be a director of one of the largest uh, electronic research labs in the country. That I could probably do the SD card as well as Dave Jones. None of that uh, moved them. Yeah, this is apparently a policy from on high. So like I say, I don't blame Jason or Scott for that. Uh, apparently though, Scott may be new to the job because he was apparently not aware that this was a known problem. Let me show you that. So this email was a response 
to my trying to find out, well, okay, if I have to send it in and he won't send me the SD card data, allow me to download it, you know, what will it cost? And it took a long time. Initially, it was going to be $540, and then uh, 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 Scott talked about a number of different things that might be wrong with it, and eventually sent me this email in which he says, this is not a known or common problem. So apparently he hadn't seen this one before. Uh, and then talks about how to go about sending the unit back in. And that uh, I had asked, well, is there some way you can uh, try the unit and see if it will recover before you spend the whole $540? And he said here that, yes, he would do that uh, for $120 uh, if they can recover it. Well, that's eventually what happened. So uh, let's take one last look now at the revision history on this unit, and then I'll close this video. So this is a screenshot, and pardon the moiré pattern, uh, of uh, a portion of the signal revision history for this unit. Notice it in red here it says, a bug in file system could cause the generator never start up. And what they mean is it's bricked. <laughs> it won't do anything. Uh, Try the USB recovery, won't work. Apparently the only recovery from this is the SD card uh, that they sent uh, Dave Jones, but that they wouldn't send me. So what I'm doing is putting this up. So anyone that has either depended on my reports, where I recommended signaling equipment or whatever, put a, put a footnote in them that uh, be careful that you assign somebody to do all your updates and check the web, their website frequently for updates because you may run, run across another one of these. I haven't seen one in red before. There's certainly not anything in this revision history except for this one. So obviously they thought this was a big bug, but they, as far as I can tell, never told Dave Jones that, okay, we're not going to send this to anybody else. Or if they did, he forgot to say anything, or I, I don't know the situation there. But the let me sort of say what the bottom line is. I'm certainly not angry with uh, the people I worked with. They, they eventually got the thing, got the uh, unit repaired and back to me. It cost just under $200 total, but uh, that's not a, an issue. Like I said, I bought this mainly just to do an evaluation anyway. I wasn't using it for any revenue producing activities. But if you have or contemplating buying signaling equipment, just be very careful that you read every revision history of every instrument you have or ever buy because there might be another one of these gotchas buried in there and you may be depending on something that somebody told you or you read somewhere or saw on YouTube and I'm just suggesting you not do that. Uh, also, if you know somebody that owns Siglant or is thinking of buying Siglant, you might let them know about this issue. Apparently there's a high level policy decision. I don't know who made it. Maybe it goes as high as the CEO. But basically it says don't trust what people say about Siglant instruments. Other, other things may happen. <laughs> and uh, at least that's the way I read it. So. Thought you might be interested in this. Uh, I'm not going to give it a regular number uh, because it's sort of an, an offhand thing, the spur of the moment video. And if I've offended anybody, I certainly apologize. And certainly if I've misstated something, I'll be happy to, to correct any factual errors that, uh, uh, that I have inadvertently made. Certainly this is my opinion, but I think that you should uh, be careful, I guess is my, uh, is my phrase. So, stay safe. Have a nice day.